Adrian Ross Show. Before we jump into today's episode, I got to ask you, have you tried the new search engine yet? Luxel, that's www.luxel.com, L-U-X-X-L-E dot com. It's just a few months old and already it's a hit. You've got to check it out. Instead of jumping into Google as you always do or jumping into Safari, go to Luxel, www.luxel.com. Check it out. And now let's jump in to today's episode. Fair warning, today's episode is not designed for children. It's for adults because we're going to be talking about some some deep things that do pertain to children, but we don't want children to see it. And you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about as we go along. I'm going to catch you up on where things are with what I've been uh, fighting for in terms of literature in our public libraries or in our public schools or private schools. It's about a book called Gender Queer. You may have read what I've written about it on my Substack at adrianross.substack.com. I have a few uh, articles about it there. I also uh, have been talking about it here on the Adrian Ross Show. I want to catch you up to speed. First, let's just rewind a little bit. Gender Queer is a young adult graphic novel which tops the list for a couple years now of the most challenged books. There are states who have fought against it being in the schools because believe it or not, gender queer is in public and private schools. But there are some states that have fought that battle and uh, and, uh, the book has been removed. I am not gonna take you through everything, but just the short version, I wanted to know if it was in the public library here in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, which is not too far from me, And I wanted to know if it was in the young adult section. I, uh, like I said, did some episodes and did some writing on it. Uh, Going back maybe a month now, it started. And I went in, I spoke to uh, the woman behind the desk. I learned that the book is there, but the book is in the graphic novel section, not the young adult section. And I felt good about the fact that it was not in the, in the teen section or in the the children's section. Wasn't feeling good about the book being there, but at least it wasn't there in that section uh, directly where children are, you know, are mulling around. Now, Gender Queer is extremely graphic. In addition to it being a graphic novel, it's graphic, it's explicit, It the content and the images are of children engaging in sexual activity, including masturbation, including um, oral sex. I mean, it is explicit and it's absolutely inappropriate for children, but it's also inappropriate for everyone. And so after I left there, having uh, some sense of feeling better that it wasn't in the children or the teen section, I started thinking about it. I'm thinking, really, this should not be anywhere. Um, there should not even be adults getting off, excuse the expression, on looking at children engaging in sexual activity. And I was wondering, well, do you have a policy that even though it's not in the children's section, is there a policy that would prohibit a child from taking out this book? It's it's rather popular and it's gotten a lot of attention and, um, and children are innocent and curious. And that's why it takes adults to protect children. And there should be no material that shows children engaging in in uh, se- anal sex, oral sex, masturbation should not exist. It's just wrong. And as I specified before, I'm not a book banner. I taught for nearly 20 years in the public school, English to seventh graders. I am a writer myself. I'm an author myself. I just don't go around trying to ban books, but there are some books that are inappropriate where they are. And also there are some books that are just inappropriate, period. We should not be exploiting children. We should not be sexualizing children. We should not be encouraging pedophilia either. And all this stuff works together. So I, uh, you know, I just went about trying to get some information. 
and I got some information, but again, I wasn't satisfied. So I went back to the library a few days ago because I wanted to know what their policy is concerning children being able to take out books. So I, I went and I'm going to show you, uh, um, actually you're gonna hear the audio of my conversation with uh, two librarians. I spoke to one first, but she had limited knowledge. And so she directed me to the woman sitting next to her. And then I had an in-depth conversation with the woman uh, next to her about policy, about my concerns and all of that. So I, like I said, no children should be uh, listening to, to this conversation. And you might have to lean in a little bit close to here at the beginning, but it, it doesn't take long before it's, it's quite clear. You can hear the conversation. I want you to pay close attention to what both ladies say concerning the policy. Okay. I want you to pay close attention to the conversation as it pertains to porn and my questions about porn and their answers about porn. And I want you to pay close attention to what the librarian says concerning the fact that this graphic novel is a memoir, what her concept is about that whole thing and how I address that. Okay, so we're gonna move into that. If there are any, any children there, move them somewhere else or you go somewhere else, please. All right, before we jump into that seriousness, let me remind you, please, to go to www.wethepeopleofmissouri.org. Okay, www.wethepeopleofmissouri.org and also wtpcapecountymo at gmail. Dot com. If you love freedom, if you love the Constitution, if you're interested in how to be prepared on the local level to have an impact, if you're interested in guests who inform and inspire you, we, the people of Cape Girardeau, is the place for you. Those of you who are local, you can check it out Tuesdays, 5 o'clock p.m. at Delmonico's in Jackson, Missouri, and you can also check them out on YouTube and Facebook at We the People of Cape Girardeau. I will be back later and I'll tell you about the next meeting, which is August 29th at five o'clock PM. I'll tell you more about it. I intend to be there and I hope you'll be there also. And now let's get down to business. This is the conversation I had at the Cape Girardeau Public Library. I went back to the public library today, which is Tuesday. As you may recall, a few weeks ago, I went to the library to inquire about a book called Gender Queer by Maya Kabeib. It is a graphic novel for young adults depicting children having sexual relationships, masturbation, oral sex. It is completely inappropriate for children. It's completely inappropriate, period. But anyway, I was glad the first time I went that it wasn't in the children's section or the teen section, but it still bothered me. Why? Because I wanted to know what their policy was. Can children still take the book out? And why is there a book in the public library depicting children having sex, even for adults to be looking at? So I had a conversation with a couple of librarians, one at length. She was very kind, very patient. But how do we get to the place where I have to say what I had to say? And uh, you can hear that conversation now. Hello. <laughs> Uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, is there uh, like a main librarian here? Are you a main librarian? Um, I have a question. What's the question? Policy question. Okay. You're able to do that? I just don't want to go through it and then have to go through it again. My question. Okay. I'm, my name is Adrian. I'm a former English teacher from New York, current resident, concerned citizen. Concerned about this book, which. I'm sure you know it's controversial. It's you know on uh, most channels. It's among the most challenging books. So I was here a few weeks ago. Was glad to find out that it wasn't in the teen section or the children's section. It's in the graphic novel section. But I'm curious about your policy. Any child can just take the book out, or is there a policy where a parent has to approve of something? A parent has to approve when they sign up a child that their child can check um, anything out. 
Okay. That is how it is. Like, we just um, had a whole thing go through. Sorry. I can't remember the exact thing that they did it up there. But, okay. When the state represents something, made a new policy where basically a parent has to agree if the child's going to have a library card here, they are free to check out any book. Okay. So, so every parent has to agree to that. If they don't want to, they don't have to. But okay. that is what it is. And of is. course, they do that without knowing what could possibly be on the shelves. I mean, they know. You can look up to see what's in the library. Right. But for each book, it's not, uh, they don't have to and go and say, I want to take this out, which is completely inappropriate for a child. They don't have to do that. I believe there is nothing for that. Okay. But it is up to the parent. Okay. So what is your, and uh, generally in here, is right, there so like a porn policy? Um, we only, like... I don't know how they pick up the books. She is, she doesn't, she's a ringer person. She picks up the books for the adult section. And then we have someone else who picks out the books for the youth section. No, I mean, in the library anywhere. Is it, you, do you have porn in the library? Yes, we take checks. We don't like take cards. Like things labeled um, porn. Things that are obvious porn. Like anal sex, oral sex, pictures of children engaging in that. Which is obviously why this is one of the most challenged books. So I'm just saying, do you have that in the library. Porn. You don't. Okay. So I would like to talk about this one because this is obvious. It's obvious porn, and it's not just porn, but it's children engaging in sexual activity, which you know is an issue for me. So I'm just curious about the policy. I, can, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? Oh, she answered some of my questions, but. Uh -huh. I am concerned about this book, mm -hmm. which you're not surprised, I'm sure. No, I'm not. Uh, you know, it's one of the most challenged books, yes. obviously. Um, I was here, I was telling her, I was here a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I was glad that it wasn't in the children or teen yeah. section. Mm -hmm. It was in the graphic novel. But, just want to verify, when ch when parents come in and the child gets a, a, um, a library card, mm -hmm. that means they can check out anything without parental consent is that right that is right if they are not with their parent yes okay so that they just can yes. take the book out okay uh -huh. um sad next question though is do you generally have uh do you generally have porn in the library i mean it depends on your definition of porn um okay uh, well I, when you see people engaging in anal oral sex masturbation I consider that, I mean, that's just obvious porn. So, do you generally have images like that? I mean, it's, I mean, there's anatomy books. Um, well, that's. <laughs> yeah, it's a biography, it's a biography. It is in the adult section. We don't have like a porn it's, section. Um, well, that's good. <laughs> it's a memoir, but that doesn't, yeah. I mean, somebody's story doesn't mean yeah. children need to be seeing their story. Children need to be children. And that's fair. Um, but yeah. it's up to parents to police because sometimes, like, parents have different ideas of what their children can and can't read. Sure, um, yeah. And so... But I wonder, I mean, most people don't really think that children, that you're gonna, that there's going to be a book depicting... Um, so I'm just having a conversation. Like yeah, I was no, telling her, I'm, I'm a former English teacher from yeah. New York. I'm a concerned citizen. I care about kids. Yeah. And to me, there should be nothing that depicts i mean p adults do what they want to do you know whatever but when you have a, a book that depicts children engaging in sexual activity i think that's a concern i don't i mean i'm not a book banner i'm yeah, a writer i'm an okay. author yeah. you know all that i'm all about that yeah. freedom i'm an american but I'm, I'm concerned about where we're going where where we have children it's not just adults having sex, which is bad enough for children to be able to access. Yeah. But for children to be exploited in this manner where they are um, pictured, I don't even care if it's a, car a cartoon. I mean, yeah. this is a graphic, graphic novel. Yes. So you, you guys don't think that that's worth revisiting, having a book where children are engaging so in I sexual activity and there are images of that. So... It's we so we buy materials. It is based on certain criteria. Um, it's also very hard to read every single book, Absolutely. but also since it is an adult book and it's in the adult section, well, it's, actually um, a, it's actually a young adult book to publishers. But, but I'm glad you have it yeah. in the. But um, so I get that was glad. Like yes. I said I walked out that day yeah. and I said, well, I'm glad it's not in the teen section. It's not because unfortunately it is in public schools, and children are, and and states are shutting it down gotcha. because of that. But children can still access it. It's not like the parent has to yeah. know. 
and it's showing children. Yes, and I understand it's very concerning, mm -hmm. um, especially to parents. Um, but it is should be a, to anybody. But yeah, it is a memoir about a person's life and what they experience, and so. Okay. People, it happens. Um, it does have reviews, which is what we base a lot of our stuff on. If things have peer reviews in magazines. Um, okay. So, so anyone who has a story to tell, that's appropriate for children because it's a so memoir. So it's important that it's not in the children's section. Gotcha. Um, and so we're not saying that children should be able to check it out, but mm -hmm. because that's up to the parent on what their kids can and can't read. But not for each individual book. No. Just overall. And of course, like you said, they don't know every book that's in the place as well. Yeah. Correct. So there are probably children who look at parents don't know that they're engaging in this because your policy doesn't require that for every book. Yeah. But also there's a lot of like regular books as well in the in the collection that have sex and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, With children? I, I mean, I don't know specifically, but... I'm not like, trying to give you a hard time. No, I know. But I'm just saying... Shouldn't we know that, though? I mean, shouldn't we know? You can't read every book. I'm, like I said, I was an English teacher for almost 20 years. I, I, I can't even read every book, but I'm very careful. I was very careful about what is on my what's on my shelves. But I'm saying, shouldn't we know if there are images of children are to be children, not to be sexualized? And that's where we are right now. So I think it's important. I have not read this book. So yeah. I'm well, not, I haven't read the full book, but I've seen it. So I am not sure, like, what the sexual content is. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's... I don't think it is necessarily condoning that kids have sex. I think, I, again, I haven't read it, so I don't know. Yeah, I think it is, but I also think it's, I mean, she's telling her story, like mm -hmm. you said, but it's all, it's not just, condo it, there are images of children having oral sex and masturbating, you know, it's, this, this is, I mean, this is, there's a reason why it's the most challenged book. Yeah. You know, it's not like, I love, my favorite book of all time is To Kill a Mockingbird. Yeah. I loved it. Now, that's often challenged. It's not that kind of situation, right? There was the racial content and the wording yeah. and all that, the language. This is explicit sexual activity with not your 40-year-old, you know, I'm 52, and I look at this and it makes my stomach go. And I really don't think children, I mean, we need to protect, especially with the sex trafficking issue we have going on and child sex trafficking, we are normalizing pedophilia. I don't even want kids to see this, but I certainly don't want some old man coming in here and getting off on looking at children, you know, having oral or anal sex and masturbating. There's something wrong with that. So I know you've told me all yeah, you can tell yeah. me, but so what does one do if they have a legitimate concern yeah. about it? Do you have no options? No, we have a, let's see if it's on our website. There is a, uh, the form. Okay. Where is it? Let me see if I can just search for it. It's, okay. called a, it's a reconsideration. Okay. Does it, do they go anywhere or does it just go into that circular file? Um, it's reviewed by the material selection staff, which is the director, me, and the head of youth, yes, since yeah. we buy the materials. Yeah. Um, and then, why is it? Where is it? Okay. I wonder if I have it in my file. I should. I appreciate your patience. Oh, yeah, no, you're good. Okay. Is this the only... I guess it is only one page. And I access that online? Um, I think we have it on our website somewhere. We should. I okay. know we've talked about it because we've had lots of talks about it. Yeah. Um, but I'm printing off the form for you now. Oh, for so sure. I'm just going to hand it to you. Okay. Excellent. Um, because I'm with the new website, I'm actually not sure where it ended up. Let's okay. see. Do you have some kind of form where you could actually, or is it just the written form? Um, I don't know if there's like a, an electronic a where, form or like I mean a, like a place where you can actually speak, a forum, I'm sorry. Oh, like, um, just like the concerned. board of, edu uh, not board of education, the library board meetings, or, I yeah, think yeah. are like the main ones are open to the public. And that's listed on your website when they are? It should, let me see, I'm the live best friends of the library, um, board of trustees. You know the board minutes and agendas. 
just because I'm logged in. Maybe I'll let me log out first so I can see what it does look like. Because if you go to, okay, yeah. So if you okay. go to about and then board, sorry, these things are Board of okay. Trustees. Mm -hmm. um, it has like this here, email the board, um, the bylaws, financial, all that fun stuff. But then it also, okay. oh, upcoming board. meetings. Yeah, it'll tell you all the upcoming meetings. Um, and they're usually here at the library um, mm -hmm. in the mornings and they're up in that Penzo conference room up there. Oh, in the front there? Yep, mm -hmm. okay. like in the lobby. And that's yeah. the time, like 12 to 1? Is that? Um, that one is the tax hearing. Oh, okay. Um, these are just the regular board. Oh, like September meetings. 7th. Yeah, um, 7 to 8, I'm pretty sure. Um, well, you really have to want to come 7 to 8. <laughs> <laughs> it's, but I guess that's just when, because they all do other stuff as well. Oh, sure. That's yeah. when they meet. Um, but there's a place you there can should they be, allow yeah. you to speak um and i i don't deal with the board very often mm -hmm. um i thought i had some of my director's cards i don't think i did um but she can also she attends all of those meetings mm -hmm. so um uh, i can give you her email and you can reach out to her if just to verify that this is like when when people can come as okay. well okay. um so hers is just her first name katie okay. at keep library.org i always start out writing too big i know me too. I <laughs> the same thing. Um, all right great. are you still looking at the form yeah let me grab the one for you okay. it should be on the website if people get we've had a lot of people turn them in okay great so, i say a lot like it's something that happens all the time but i know that at least three have come in sure. over the course of the past couple years so okay. thank you see, yeah and then they just re usually render a decision and then reach back out to the person and okay. tell them what the decision was? Yeah. That's, that's downloading the policy. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, again, um, if you go to about mm -hmm. and then under policies okay. and you scroll there in alphabetical order, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. request for reconsideration. Mm -hmm. And that's um, what you just gave me, oh, right? That's, yeah, this is just the talk about yeah this is just the policy where is the form but i could bring this back in right yes uh -huh. you just bring that back in that yeah. way i don't have to try to find it on the. yeah no you're good i just it should it should be there for people to yeah I just don't know. maybe they didn't put it back on with the i don't know because i mean it's been something we've recently talked about but if i can't find it i will definitely talk to okay um What's your name? My name's Kayla. Kayla. Okay, Kayla yeah. and Mrs. Katie. All right, thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, no problem. For your patience and yeah, no, uh, here in my heart on this. And uh, okay, I'll fill this out and then I'll also email her. And see. Okay, yeah, just to verify because like it, it's listed on there, but I just want to make sure that those are open because I know they have meetings that are open for the public. Okay. Um, yeah, because no one wants to come at 7 a.m. and then find out the wrong time. Yeah, exactly. Meeting. Can I leave this with you? Of course, yeah. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, not a problem. All right, God bless you. Thank you. So as you heard, this was a rather respectful conversation. There's a lot that went into that conversation. And I appreciate the respectful exchange. And I want to say, first of all, that, that my questions and my push on this and the push that other people um, have been making uh, against this, because certainly I'm not the only person in the area uh, and I've learned more recently of others who are uh, fighting this as well, fighting this battle with genderqueer and other books. But I I want to make it clear, it's not about being against. It's not just, well, we're against this literature or we're against this people, these people or whatever. It's about being for children. It's about being for what is right. It's about understanding that children should be children. They should be allowed to be children. They should not be exploited. They should not be depicted in the way that we're seeing in certain books, such as Gender Queer and another book that I'm going to talk about in a moment that recently came to my attention being in this same library. I asked you to pay attention to what they say about policy. And, and I am challenging this policy and I'm going to be asking them to change the policy. You heard during that conversation that they have a meeting uh, coming up. They have a meeting in the first week of September. I intend to be there at the meeting. I will sign up to make a public comment. You get very little time. It's, it's gonna be hard to get everything in three minutes, but I'm going to do the best I can 
to talk about this book, to talk about what my concerns are, and to talk about policy. Now, as you heard, they do have a policy where a parent has to sign to allow a child to take out a book. And so the librarians, both of them let me know, well, we do have a policy when the parent, if the parent's not there, then the child has can be given permission to take out a book. And so they feel, I guess, that that should be okay as far as, say, gender queer is concerned, because the parents signed off for them to have a library card. Here's my concern. No parent was thinking that a book depicting sexual activity would be in that library. I mean, I'm talking images where, excuse my bluntness, I told you no kids here, but I'm talking about looking at people on top of one another, and I'm talking about somebody with a penis in his mouth, okay? I, I mean, I hate to just be that blunt, but this is what I'm talking about. And this is, these are children, okay? And so when the parent says, I'd like my kid to have a library card, they're probably like, okay, they're gonna be taking out Judy Bloom or you know, some some historical fiction or maybe maybe some mild romance where a girl has a crush on a guy or you know, they go out, they kiss, whatever. But they're certainly, most parents are certainly not thinking that they're signing off their child to go be able to take out a book like Gender Queer with explicit graphic sexual content. They're not thinking that. And they're certainly not thinking about the book I'm going to tell you about in a moment. So I believe it's unfair to parents because this is the option that you're giving them. You're saying to me that a parent, once they sign that off, then their kid can take out absolutely any book in the library. And I get, I get the point, right? You don't feel like you should be able to guard every single book, but there's a solution to that. But first, let me tell you why it's unfair. Because your two options are these. One, your child gets a library card and can take out any any content that is absolutely inappropriate or your child can't take out anything at all. So if they if they don't have a library card, then they can't take out anything without you being there. And if they do have a library card, they can take out all manner of debauchery and filth and sexual exploitation and things that are just dangerous for children. There's gotta be a middle ground. There can't be, they can take out absolutely anything uh, at all including watching children with, you know, with penises in their mouths, you know, and, 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 and um, encouraging the sexual activity or, well, I'm sorry, your kid doesn't get to take out anything if you're not there. It's not, it's not fair. It's not fair for that parent because no parent again is thinking that their child is going to have access to this. So there's got to be a middle ground. First of all, let me be clear. I don't believe any book that sexualizes children, that shows children engaging in sexual activity should be there, period. Not even in the adult section, because as I said on the audio, it may be even worse to think about grown men getting off on looking at these images of children. Missouri is number nine in the state in human trafficking, and among that would be children and sex trafficking. We don't need we don't need this kind of situation. We don't need grown people even looking at children in that way. And we certainly also don't need children being shown in this way and looking at this either and being encouraged to do this. It's just not right. It's inappropriate. And they're not going to fight for themselves. They don't know to fight for themselves. There's a reason they're children and we're adults. Okay. And it's unfair for a parent to just card blanche, however you say that, to just be able to, to just, yeah, your kid can just do whatever. No, it's not. It's not right. So, you know, someone mentioned to me recently, he said, you know, back in the day, it seemed like you remember Blockbuster and these video companies, we can go and rent videos. He said that when you when a kid wanted to take out a video, take out a movie, they had, you know, you have a card to be able to borrow. You guys remember that? It wasn't that long ago. Right. But there was something on certain movies so that if a minor came in and that label was on that movie, their their card 
did not cover that movie. They were not able to just take that movie out. They had to get permission because it had a certain label. So whereas there were a plethora of other videos that they could take out, they could not take out those particular movies that had that label where it was inappropriate. In that case, they needed permission. That's the middle ground that perhaps if they don't get rid of the book altogether or the inappropriate books altogether, then there's a middle ground right there that, that, you know, Hey, that's your kid. If you, if you don't mind the kid looking at images of those and seeing that, I, I think it's abuse, but it's your kid. I believe in parental rights. So if the, if the book is there and, the, and, and the kid it's labeled that this is inappropriate material, or this is however they want to phrase that. They may not call it inappropriate, but it, it's not age appropriate, or however they say it. Well, then when the kid comes up with that book with that label, if they even do that, right? They may not do that. Then you know what? That parent has to be called, or or the you know the parent has to be there. And then, okay, now granted, a kid can sit there in the library and, and read the book there. Um, I guess you can't police everything, but people come in, they they take books out. And so we wanna, we wanna do what we can do to minimize the opportunity for children to digest this harmful, exploitative um, uh, material. So, so why not label it and then they can have access to, almost, to, to just about everything, but these things are just are not age appropriate or they're labeled X, Y, and Z. And so we have to call the parent, have to get a hold of the parent or the parents there with you saying, yeah, I don't mind my kid looking at that. I don't mind my kid reading that. But just to say, well, the policy is once you have a library card, that nothing is off limits. That works fine in a society where people have common sense and they care about children. Unfortunately, we're living in a situation now where it's not quite like that. Okay, so that's one thing um, that I, that I want to bring out in that meeting. Also, a, a policy change should be pretty simple, you know. And uh, the next thing I want to talk about is, you notice the porn. When I mentioned porn. It was like, well, it depends on how you define porn. Well, I, I I'd like to think that people engaging in oral sex, uh, children even engaging in oral sex and, and masturbation and all this stuff and showing it there and having the content and reading about it. I, I, I think it's porn. I think we can agree on that. Okay. It's, it's not that difficult. It's sexually explicit. It's showing it. That's porn. And then the, 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 I think it was the first uh, woman there who said, well, uh, how, how did she say it? Well, we have anatomy uh, books. It might've been the second one. I don't remember, but you know, we, we have anatomy and physiology. Well, duh, like anatomy and physiology that's taught in, in, in schools as well. Although I did cover uh, a story in which a teacher took it too far and decided to tell, te tell children um, how to have sexual pleasure and all that. And somehow she thought that that was appropriate in her anatomy and physiology class. And so there were repercussions for that as there should have been. Um, cause you can't, you know, you can't be doing this stuff. So yeah, anatomy and physiology, uh, okay, librarian, that's not what I meant. And we know that I told you we're talking anal sex, oral sex, masturbation, that kind of thing, showing images. I'm not talking about anatomy. Okay. Um, and so, so that was kind of interesting, but this was really interesting when the second librarian said to me, well, it is a memoir. Okay. So it's, it's, it's supposedly nonfiction. It's based on the life of the author, Maya Kabeb. Um, and so because it's her story, does that, that makes it okay? Because her story is pornographic, then everybody else has the, uh, should have the opportunity, that, that's a poor word, should be exposed to that because it's a memoir? Well, there are lots of things that are part of people's life story, as I pointed out in my conversation with her. That doesn't mean that everyone should have access to it. We got people who murder people and uh, and they could tell you how they did it and all that. And they could show you images of it. And that's their story, but that's not appropriate in certain places, right? So just because it's a memoir, it sounds to me that if she wants to tell her story about her, her journey, 
and, and, and to her identity and all that and sexuality and touching, feeling, tasting and all that other stuff sounds to me that she should be telling her story to a therapist. Go to counseling and tell your story. Do not subject children to your story, your sordid story. Everybody has a story and not every story is appropriate. It's just that simple. So that was a poor, uh, that was just a poor comment on, on her part. Um, but anyway, uh, you know, they mentioned that they can't read every, every book. I get that. I understand that. But as a librarian, you, you know, she told me that how they choose the books and, 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 and all that. And I've done some research, research about how they do that. I get that. Um, they have a whole process of that, but as a librarian, you know that this book, Gender Queer, is one of the most challenged books. Um, you know the books that are are causing all kinds of controversy, and you know why, and you should know why. For whatever reason, you decided to bring it in there anyway. You know, and any book that is that controversial for the reasons that it's controversial, and we all know it, especially if this is your business and your profession, you know why. So there's really no excuse, in my opinion, for not having read that book. Before you put it out there, knowing the history of it, you should read it before you allow that in there for anybody. And certainly when you have a policy that will allow children to access it. Uh, it that, that just common sense to me. But now let me tell you about another book that came to my attention that's also in that library. And this one, my understanding is it's actually in the young adult section. It's called This Book is Gay. And it's written by Juno Dawson. And it was published in, my understanding is 2014 in the UK and then published in the United States in 20. 15 gender queer was published in 2019 but this book is gay here in the in the United States 2015 and it is also among the most banned and it's among the most challenged books and let me tell you why this one it it absolutely it, it's it's mind boggling that it's there gender queer is not in the children's section this book is gay is in the children's section. And in my opinion, this book is gay, maybe even worse than that. And let me, let me tell you why there's a, there's a part of the book that uh, in particular have not read the whole book. I've just seen this part of the book, which was enough. Okay. It goes into the body parts and what brings uh, pleasure sexually. This part, that part, uh, the butt, the nipples. I mean, it goes into all of that about sexual pleasure. This is a young adult book, okay? But then not only does it do that, it then gives children the steps to take if they want to hook up with other homosexuals, it says, via sex apps. I'm not kidding. It literally tells them the steps. Go, you know, go on the sex app, upload your picture, look for other homosexuals in the area, and very often you can meet up with them to engage in this the, these activities that bring the pleasure, I guess, that you've been explaining in this young adult book. So now, surely this is not legal. So now we have a book in the public library. And if gender queer is, is any indication of how things go, it's likely to also be in public schools. Telling children, hey, you can get on a sex app. You can put your picture up there. You can meet other people like you in your area. And then you guys can hook up. You can meet up. Are you kidding me? Whether homosexual or heterosexual, we know that, that there's a problem with children who get online 
and get caught up in these, these meeting these people and then end up hurt or dead. We know that there's law enforcement who risk their lives to step in in situations like that. We know that there's an issue in this country and beyond with sex trafficking, child sex trafficking. And you have a book in your library telling them how to get off sexually and then telling them how to meet up with strangers who have those same inclinations that you have. What in the world? It's called This Book is Gay. And so I went to the library uh, and I, 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 you know, you saw in the, you heard in the audio where they said there is a process. I said, what is, what are the, pro what's the process? And, and she gave me the form, a uh, reconsideration form, asking them to reconsider. It's a, it's a quite a form. I filled it out for genderqueer. And now that this book is gay came to my attention, I filled it out for that also. And when I go to the meeting, I'm going to have to try to squeeze all this in about those about those two books about how inappropriate they are about what it's how it exploits children how it encourages children to get on sex apps and meet up with strangers who could kill them god forbid and 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 encouraging them to engage in this kind of sexual activity and also talking about changing their policy so that certain books if they got to be there oh god help us that they don't but if they have to be there that parents have to specifically uh, uh, consent to that particular book, not just all, all over the place. I got to fit all that out, out in three, all that in, in three minutes, but it's worth it. Not because we're just trying to fight for fighting sake, not because we're just trying to have a big confrontation, not just because we're against, 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 but we are for children. We are for their protection. We are for their innocence. They are children. Let them be children and stop trying to destroy this generation and the generations to come. So, so that's where we are on this issue. Please, with school starting, parents, please, I know you're busy. Please know what books are in your school, uh, the school library where your children attend. And don't think that just because your kid goes to a, a private school that it's not there. I'm telling you, do the research. There, these books, are certainly gender queer, I know, are in private schools as well, and public schools for sure. For many of them, and 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 I don't know if it's where you live, but can you find out what is the policy of the library if your kid has a public goes to the public library? I know um, not as many people maybe go to the public library as they used to, but people are still using the public library. And if your child is one of them or can access things online and all this stuff, you've got to know what's there. You have to know because these folks are setting, uh, they're setting us up to destroy our children all under the guise of, of sexual freedom and, um, and non-censorship and all of this stuff. And they, they make it look real pretty. The drag queen story hour stuff and cutting off genitals and all this stuff. There is an agenda to destroy children, to mold them, to shape them, to groom them into something that is not their identity. It's not what God has called them to do. And I believe we have to be held accountable. I believe God entrusts us with this kind, with children, with the greatest, you know, resource, with the greatest treasure. And what are we going to do with that? Are we for what is right? And this is a battle that's worth fighting for them and we are on the side of right. There is deception. There is confusion. There is, I know some folk don't want to hear it or believe it. There is a devil who comes, as the Bible says, to steal, kill, and destroy. But God says, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. They're trying to snuff out the true life and the true identity of children. And we have got to take a stand and know that heaven is backing us up. So as your kids go back to school, 
know what's going on, know what they're teaching them, know what's in the public library, the school library and the public library. And, uh, and so I wanted to, again, catch you up on where we are concerning gender queer. And now this book is gay. And I will, again, be attending a meeting. I know others are going to come as a support. We're not coming in guns a blazing. We're going to be respectful and, and prayerfully. Um, God will prepare their hearts and touch their hearts. And we don't have to figure out what's the next step. And we can just uh, come to um, the right resolution concerning this. But we shall find out. And um, that's the first week in September. Uh, there'll be a weekday morning meeting and I intend to be there. And I intend to, to respectfully uh, state a, a lot of what I'm stating to you, except <laughs> somehow doing it in three minutes. All right. So stay tuned for more information as far as that goes. All right. So um, as we wind up here, uh, let me get back to we, the people, because it's interesting because the next guest at We The People on August 29th at Delmonico's in Jackson, Missouri at five o'clock PM. The guest is Stacy Shore. And the topic is programming American children one iPad at a time. And We The People say, please join us August 29th, 5 PM at Delmonico's in Jackson to learn how to help advance true solutions and moving forward to restore Missouri public education and stop buying into the narrative of school choice and open enrollment. The Department, in elementary, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and the legislature have broken our system. Now it is time that local control and expertise restore it. Come and learn how your tax dollars are being spent to corrupt the innocence of the most innocent. And we're talking about that here today. Again, God willing, I will be there. I'd love to, to shake your hand or or um, give you a fist uh, bump or whatever and uh, and say and say hello. www.wethepeopleofmissouri.org and email them at WTP Cape County, Missouri or rather WTP Cape County MO at gmail.com. August 29th, 5 p.m. Delmonico's in Jackson. So thank you uh, for tuning in to the Adrian Ross Show. Serious episode, I know, but much needed. Please go to the BMG Network. That is the bmgnetwork.com and check out the other podcasters there. We are engaging, enlightening, informative, and even entertaining. Also, go to a podcast platform, whether you listen on Apple Podcasts or you listen on, on Spotify and Google Podcasts, Stitcher, all those out there please leave a rating and a review. I need your help. I need you to simply click five stars and, and rate and give a review also if you can, but definitely a rating, write a short review. It helps. Go to YouTube and do the same thing. Click the subscribe button, like, comment, share. These things help us bust through that algorithm. I'm telling you, there's an agenda to hide our stuff. It, it, there's such an agenda out there. I'm not even going to get into all that, but I'm noticing some things. I need your help to show your support. And please go to my Substack and subscribe, adrianross.substack.com, adrianross.substack.com. That's where I do my writing. And that's also where the podcast is. I need you to subscribe. I need you to share. I want to hear from you, adrianross.com at gmail.com. Calm. I'm asking you, if you enjoy what I'm bringing forward, if you find it valuable, then everywhere you can, leave a rating, leave a review, subscribe, like, share, and please go to my Substack, and I could use your help, your help to continue the work that I'm doing and to grow and expand. I have a vision of where I want to take it. I can't get there without God first and without your help. Pray about it if you need to, although I already can tell you what the Lord would say. All right, so thank you so much for tuning in to the Adrian Ross Show. I will catch you next time. God bless you abundantly.